case of the admin apostolic leadership, I would have set up a commission, ecumenical commission, with sister churches, and would find at least the area where we can work together, all, all of us, in order to start from a point. And then probably this area would be expanded, the area of interest that would be dear to the Armenian Evangelical, Apostolic, and Catholic churches, or at least to the two of us, because we are from them. One more question, and I think we should... And you go to the next liturgy. We'll go to the next liturgy. <laughs> you go to the next liturgy for two hours. <laughs> I've noticed that you guys have had a... There's a lot of uh, pride in how you communicate uh, from... Yesterday we heard about how you guys said we have to have our own alphabet. We got to do our own deal here. We have a new communication tool. The Armenian Apostolic Church right here saying we're going to keep language the way we want to do it in our church. I don't care if only 10% do it. We're going to do it the way we want to do it and how we're going to do it. As you see communication globally changing dramatically where the world is demanding a different form of communication than maybe what you want to decide to release. Uh, how do you see that impacting the church in Armenia? How does communication and maybe the new modes of communication affect how you're going to operate as a church? I will, t I will answer to your question with a joke. Love it. it it's, it's an Armenian joke, <laughs> by the way. We say that every morning we have 3,200,000 Napoleons waking up in Armenia which means everyone who wakes up in Armenia thinks that he has the solution for all problems. <laughs> That's why communication is not working in this country. Two people standing next to each other are unable to understand because they're speaking two different languages. The language is one and the same, but one does not want to listen what the other says. Here where the problem is. And hopefully, hopefully, in the nearest future, we will understand that communication is not about talking, it's also about listening mm -hmm. and understanding. And not only understanding, but also if there are valid points on the other side, we have to take them on. If we would be able to establish that sort of communication within the country, I believe, again, I would say, Armenia would become a paradise on earth. Because there are no other obstacles in this country for the development, for the prosperity, and for, I would say, re-Christianizing Armenia to some extent. Because being the first Christian nation, we still need the Word of God, maybe more than any other nation, because we live in a surrounding that's where you have to trust the Lord because all other forces would come too late if something happens. I, I hope I answered your question. If I may, before I say a word of thanks, uh, if I may uh, add two, uh, two notes, so you keep in mind and maybe you take notes and we can further talk about this here and then in Syria and Lebanon as well. Uh, Georg was focusing, and I'm glad he did, on the Armenian Evangelical Church in Armenia. He made reference a couple of times to the diaspora, the Armenian Evangelical diaspora as well, which has its own significance. You'll, you'll find out in Lebanon, at least, and Syria. Uh, but I should say that when you think about the Armenian Evangelical Church, I'm talking about the denomination, huh? not any group that says Armenian Evangelical. The denomination, Armenian Evangelical Church. Uh, globally speaking, all of the Armenian Evangelical Church ministers and congregations are somewhere between Reformed theology and practice and lots of pietistic uh, ingredients. So it's this Reformed theology plus pietistic approach. Put it together, some of them are more Reformed and less or less Reformed. Some of them are only pietistic and nothing much of a reformed uh, theology, or minimally, and so on and so forth. So keep this in mind, because 
you will find different people who are here back and forth. Um, this is uh, one we have. The second one, and since we will be moving from the Armenian Evangelical Church to the Armenian Apostolic Global Center, should we say, huh? the, 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 Holy the, Holy the, the, the Holy See of the yeah, Church, um, and in reference uh, to the question on the differences between the two churches, of course, Kevot could have gone on for, yeah, for an hour. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I want to, to make the following comment. I believe that neither the Armenian Apostolic Church nor the Armenian Evangelical Church are highly dogmatic churches. Mm -hmm. The main, main differences are ecclesiological. Uh, that is how you you know, ordain, and then uh, sacraments, and so on, the forms. Uh, and, and so it's mostly an ecclesiological problem between the churches, because I've noticed that Armenian Christians are not highly dogmatic in a religious sense or a theological sense. Uh, I'll give you some details. I've read, uh, when you move to Beirut, you will visit uh, Catholicos Aram the first. He had uh, a thick book of sermons you know, a few years ago in Armenia. I went through the book to try to find something that I disagree with. Now, Catholicos Aram has Protestant education, theologically. He is a graduate of our seminary in Lebanon, near School of Theology. His MDiv and his STM degrees are from there, and then PhD in Fordham. Catholic in New York City. Anyway, um, so I read this whole thing. There's nothing I disagree with. So it's, it's very interesting. But then, is he, um, I mean, are we and them the same church? No, there are lots of differences and so on. So it's mostly ecclesiology. Now, try to think. Some people accuse us, maybe it's a blessing, that all the Armenian churches, with Christ, they put their ethnicity somewhere in Christ. How does that work? I don't know. Uh, so you don't find these disputes that even in one uh, one congregation in the USA, you know, you have the liberals and the conservatives and how they approach ethical issues and how predestination issues and Calvinist issues are introduced. I mean, most of these, this is not where the, these Armenians are, whether they're apostolic. Is it pain? Is it history? Is it uh, the genocide? Persecution? Is it pride? Is it something else that's doing this? Anyway, we could unpack this in also in Syria and Lebanon. Well, Georg, thank you so much again. I, I'm sure you uh, you're with me that this.